Thank We've you. been chatting about inherent political risk around, uh, you know, possible anxiety about the general elections coming up in April and its implications on banking sector reform. To what extent are you pricing in that potential political risk for the markets in general? Good morning, Alicia. Um, on, 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 on the note of uh, political risk, uh, we have said previously that we believe that a lot of the uh, p perhaps call it downside risk to uh, banking sector performance on account of elections um, have already been priced in. Um, indications are that there isn't much of a risk from that perspective if you consider the fact that the ruling party has typically um, gone on to win the three previous elections held um, you know, in the 12 years of, or so of you know, democratic practice. Well, if we're talking about reforms, I mean, it's not just within the banking arena. Of course, that's stealing much of the attention. The Nigerian Oil and Gas Conference in Abuja has uh, also brought fresh pledges from officials that the petroleum industry bill will be passed by the National Assembly before uh, the elections actually take place. What are you making of developments on that front? Um, now, that is something that is you know, pretty important. Um, if you consider the fact that elections, according to the calendar released by the electoral you know, body, uh, are stated to happen next month, April, um, that leaves us with a 30-day window within which to pass that bill. Um, we do not perceive a situation where that bill will be passed prior to the elections. And um, this is not just a function of time. For us, there are a number of reasons that you know, appear strategic to that um, view. Um, first of all, the, the bill itself is aimed, it's, it's actually one omnibus piece of legislation that is um, focused on a whole um, total revamp of the entire oil sector mm -hmm. from downstream to midstream up to upstream, um, looking at uh, a dichotomy between onshore and offshore production, or what you call deep shelf, and also the, you know, trying to sort out the issues of associated gas as well as the oil itself. Um, we, we perceive a situation where as a component of the PIB, you know, having, you know, being passed, um, there may be, you know, um, knock-on effects with respect to um, the downstream sector itself, which obviously might have a, a negative impact should that happen immediately. Um, we see, we foresee a scenario where should the bill be passed early um, and then there is some knock-on effect in terms of petroleum product pricing, um, given the fact that there are, you know, subsisting subsidies with respect to some of the products. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, an upward division in price, which is expected on account of the international price of crude, would have a, you know, a negative impact and perhaps there might be some kind of political backlash. Um, also, there may be knock-on effects with respect to um, the oil blocks and oil mining leases that are all up for renewal. So um, we, we do not see a scenario where that will happen prior to elections. Of course, analysts saying, you know, whenever it is passed, it's the important point is that it's investor positive and fiscally positive as well. What would you be hoping for as an investor? Um, I, I think there are indeed concerns as to some of the you know, finer details of the bill. Um, a lot of the international media have, you know, over the past two years, withheld any form of investment into the sector. Um, there's little going on in terms of new well you know, acquisition or even drilling um, or exploration activities largely. Um, most of what has happened essentially is just put, you know, keeping production um, running at you know, current capacity. Um, there are obviously um, I you know, indicators that would you know, expect um, you know, where there will be some kind of a me melting point between the government's views and the views of investors. Um, the government claims, you know, it w is seeking the best intentions. Obviously, um, its its own focus is to perhaps improve its own um, um, take, revenue take, as it were. Um, but then again, there are concerns that um, if you're trying to revamp the whole structure of the industry from the incorporation to the financing structure, um, the majors are saying, you know, we have typically handled a lot of the cash flows. Um, either going to you know negotiate financing in order to you know carry on investment. So yeah. um, the key thing for them will be the financing terms, hoping that this financing structure would be favorable um, towards you know additional investments and positive as well. Of and course, also in terms of taxes and royalties. Yeah, of course. When it comes to those taxes and royalties, I mean we've got the oil majors fearing a harsher tax regime. We've had uh, Emmanuel Egboga, who's the presidential's advisor on petroleum, saying that the maximum tax take will be 65 percent, which he insisted compared well with other jurisdictions. Market view on that kind of a levy? Um, to, to be to be to be honest with you, um, the. The, the tax regime and the you know royalty regime itself governing the oil industry is actually a separate um, piece of uh, you know is, is separate is actually structured differently from what you have you know for you know regular companies. Um, it isn't as simplistic as that. 
um, actually the taxes range between 50 and 85 percent you know currently um, depending on you know depth of production depending on production volumes and a number of other factors um, we understand that the PIB aims to have a sliding scale for taxation one dependent on production level and other dependent on oil prices um, obviously the idea will be to where there is a significant windfall in terms of oil pricing to take more of that so to make statements you know, saying that it's just going to be as 65 for me I think it's um, uh, pretty um, I, I think the best thing would be to actually yeah. wait and see you know get lay hands on that bill and understand the final details of it Victor is that your approach towards the listed oil majors right now wait and see what's the investment merit that they hold at this stage yeah, pre predominantly that, that is the view. Um, currently, we are you know, largely neutral on a lot of the, the players in the downstream sector. Um, obviously, the reasons for that being one, um, these this guys operate in an environment where margins are you know, pretty thin. Um, a lot of it depends on volumes, how much they can push volumes. Um, cu the current scenario for production is one where a lot of the majors actually do import refined products. So they are exposed to the vagaries of international crude prices as against you know, being hedged. Um, whereas um, the original design was to have some all you know crude production volumes you know, set aside for local production using Nigerian refineries, um, but that is not the case. Um, the other challenge also being the infrastructure challenge, being able to distribute this product across the country and and sell the product um, at competitive pricing. Um, currently, um, except for diesel, uh, you know known as AG automotive gas oil, um, all the other products are typically um, subsidized. Um, so in in a sense. Um, there can't be much in terms of you know, maximizing profits and where the government you know, commits to subsidies, the payments don't come when and as you know, due. Um, even though there have been significant improvements in the past year, um, using um, government treasuries to, in some cases, offset some of the um, liabilities to those importers. But um, then again, um, I think subject to the passage of the PIB and its impact on the downstream sector in terms of um, a full deregulation of the product pricing, perhaps we're going to see you know, better efficiencies of scale and um, perhaps better margins.